Number one, which of the following is a lepton? So basically a lepton is a type of a fundamental particle. Well, there are actually two groups of fundamental particles. One, there is the family of quarks and the other is the family of leptons. The data is given in the syllabus. Here, it is not option A since a pion is a type of meson, not a lepton. Not B since it is not a fundamental particle and it does not have any mass. A photon does not have any mass. Neutron, so it is not neutron since it has three quarks. The quarks of a neutron are up, down and down quark. So this is not, not a lepton itself since these three are not fundamental particles. D is fundamental particle, electron is a fundamental particle. So the fundamental particle leptons consist of electron, electron neutrino, mu1, mu1 neutrino and tau, tau neutrino. Two coils L and M are placed next to each other as shown. So we have two coils here, L and M. There is an alternating current in coil L and alternating potential difference is produced across coil M. So this is a primary coil and this is a secondary coil. Which of the following will not increase the maximum potential difference across M? So across the secondary coil. So um, for A, increasing the frequency of the alternating current. So let's see here. We know that frequency equals to 1 by time period and EMF induced equals to N phi by T. So if we increase the frequency, if we increase the frequency, the time period decreases. So if the time decreases, the EMF induced will increase. So this statement is correct since the EMF induced is a potential difference. So A is correct, so it will increase. Part B, increasing the magnitude of current in coil B. So if we increase the current in coil L, sorry. So if we increase the current in the primary coil, let's see, the Vp equals to Ip into Rp. So V equals to IR in primary coil. If we increase the current in primary coil, the voltage across the primary coil would increase, the potential difference would increase. And we have another formula which is Vp by Vs equals to Np by Ns. So this is the voltage in primary, voltage in secondary, number of trans in primary, secondary. So when we make a voltage in secondary, the subject we have Vp into Ns divided by Np. So since we saw here that when we increase the current in primary coil, the potential difference across primary coil increases. So when this increases, this increases. Since the voltage across primary coil increase and these stay constant, the voltage across the potential difference across the secondary coil increases. So it will increase, so the answer is not B. So let's take a look at C. Increasing the number of coils, number of turns on coil M. There. So if we, again, we have Vs equals to Vp into Ns divided by Mp, Mp. So when we increase the number of turns in coil M, so we are increasing the number of turns in secondary coil, we increase Ns, so we have higher Vs, so potential difference in secondary coil. So C is also not the answer. For D, D is the answer since we know that the elect there is a way of explaining that the Electric field strength is inversely proportional to the radius. Whatever it is, the magnetic field, the electric field, it, the strength decreases when the distance between them increases. As you know, equals to 1 by r square. A by r square. We have to have a constant here. So due to this, the electric field strength or any strength between them decreases and it will not increase the maximum potential difference. So D is the answer. Airport. Suitcases of mass 22 kg are placed onto a conveyor belt moving at a speed of 0.75 meter per second. 12 cases are placed onto the belt every minute. So we have suitcases, 12 suitcases of 22 kg, which are placed on the belt for every 60 seconds or one minute. Which of the following gives the average horizontal force exerted? So we know the formula. Force equals to change in momentum by time 
which is mv minus mu by t so we have mass of 22 this will be v minus u by t so we have mass of 22 initially so for example this is the conveyor belt and we are putting it putting a box here so if we put a box like this the horizontal velocity would be zero right so if the horizontal velocity is zero then the initial speed would be zero then u will be equal to zero since we are putting it here and after we put it here it will move this way so if it moves this way which is moving at 0 0.75 meter per second then the final velocity would be 0 0.75 and the initial velocity would be zero and we have 22 kg masses of 12 cases so here it will be into 12 divided by 60 since it is it says that every minute so divided by 60 so we would have 22 into 0 0.75 into 12 divided by 60 so the answer is c a sphere of mass m1 moving with velocity u1 so we have m1 here moving with velocity u1 collides elastically with a stationary sphere so u2 will be equal to zero of mass m2 the sphere then moves about at different velocities which of the following equation applies in the direction of u1 so the direction of u1 is the horizontal component so from unit 1 we learned that if we have velocity v and if the angle is given then the horizontal component the horizontal component this component would be v cos theta if the angle is theta and the vertical component would be v sin theta so if we consider the horizontal component the initial horizontal component of this would be m1 u1 and m1 u1 plus m2 u2 since u2 equals to zero we have m1 u1 here so the horizontal component of this would be v2 m2 cos theta plus v1 m1 cos phi so which one of the answers match so we have v2 into cos theta v2 into v2 cos theta m1 v1 cos phi, m1 cos phi. So this is number five which of the following equations applies if the collision is elastic so during elastic collision the total kinetic energy before collision would be equal to the total kinetic energy after collision since in uh, elastic collision the energy is conserved so the total energy we need to cover the total kinetic energy so it will be c so we we might think why it would not be the others since we can take this of course since this matches with the previous answer but um, you know m2 has velocity zero while but when we are calculating the kinetic energy we do not consider the angle since kinetic energy is a scalar quantity so any type of energy is a scalar quantity and we only consider the direction when we talk about a vector quantity so the answer is c the early 20th century rutherford carried out investigations into the scattering of alpha particles by thin gold foil which of the following conclusions could not be made from the results of the investigation? Most of the mass of the atom is concentrated in one place. Yes, this could be made since if it is concentrated in one place, then the alpha particles would be deflected by a large angle. The atom is mostly empty spaces. This is also right. This could be deduced from the results of the investigation since most of the alpha particles went straight through. The nucleus contains positively charged protons. So, in this time, in the 21st century, we can tell if the protons are positively or negatively charged. But at that time, the, the, that experiment was not conducted to find out whether the nucleus contains positively charged protons. So C is the answer, since it is not related to the experiment. And at that time, of course, part D, there is a concentration of charge at one place in the atom. Yes, this is also correct. Seven. The diagram shows a current carrying wire passing between north and south magnetic poles. So this is our wire. These are the two magnetic poles. The 
magnetic flux density between the poles is 0.09 tesla the length of the wire within the magnetic field is 4.5 centimeter so this is 4.5 centimeter this length which of the following gives a force on the wire in newtons so we have to use the formula of f equals to b i l so another thing that we have to notice is this is the magnetic field lines from north to south and between this this wire goes in at an angle of 28 degrees so generally we need to calculate the perpendicular component of the current so the perpendicular component of the current will be if this is 0.115 ampere and if this is 28 degree then the horizontal component would be 0.15 into cos 28 so the perpendicular component is cos 28 right so we have f equals to bil p equals to 0.09 into current is 0.15 into l so the length is 4.5 centimeters cent is 10 to the power minus 2 into cos 28 so cos 28 is not there but we have sin 62 and trigonometry says that sin 62 degrees is equals to cos 28 degrees so these two are correct so we can write here instead of cos 28 we can write sin 62 so the answer is either b or d so let's figure out the direction of the force so for Determining the direction of the force we have to consider the Fleming's left hand rule. So the thumb is the force the index finger is the magnetic field direction and our middle finger is current So So when we use the Fleming's left hand rule the index finger would be pointing downwards since the magnetic field line is this way the middle finger would be leftwards since the current is going this way the horizontal component of the current is leftwards so we would see that the thumb is pointing out of the page so d is the answer so we have a calculation problem here and a fleming's left hand rule problem here number eight a particle has mass 4.8 mega electron volt per c square what is the mass of the particle in kilograms so to get the mass of the particle in kilograms we need to get rid of all these prefixes so there is a rule that when we have to add a prefix we divide and when we remove a prefix we multiply so we have 4.8 and we have to remove mega electron volt so to remove a prefix we have to multiply by the values so to remove mega we need to multiply it by 10 to the power 6 and to remove electron volts we need to multiply it by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and to remove 1 by c square we have to multiply it by 1 by c square so 1 by c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 square so from this we get the answer 8.5 into 10 to the power minus 30 so the answer is b Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Carbon fourteen is an isotope of carbon. It is formed in the Earth's atmosphere when a nucleus of element X absorbs a neutron and emits a proton. Which row of the table correctly shows the proton number and the nuclear number of this nucleus of element X? So this says that an element X has a nuclear number, a proton number. It emits a proton and gains a neutron to form carbon 14 6. So we have let's assume the nuclear number is X and the proton number is Y. So comparing the proton proton numbers, we would have Y minus 1 plus 0 equals to 6. So Y would be equals to 7 and X minus 1 plus 1 equals to 14. So X would be 14. So the value of x would be this, the nuclear number is 14, so this is 14 and the value of y, the proton number is 7, so y is 7, proton number is 7. So the answer is c.
this particle is a baryon. So, which of the following products could not be produced by the decay of this particle? So, this particle, as we can see that this particle has a charge 0. So, the final charge should also be 0. So, let's see. Proton is 1. This is 0. So, 1 plus 0 is 1. So, this is not the answer. The neutron is 0. This is also 0. So, this might be the answer. C. Proton is 1. Electron is minus 1. The electron neutrino is plus 1. So, this would be plus 1. Here again, proton is plus 1, muon is minus 1, but muon neutrino is plus 1. So the final value would be again plus 1. So the only option which is equals to 0 is B. So due to the conservation of charge, this would be the answer.